All right. Volume looks good. Are we getting any echo or anything? Nope, nothing like that. Okay. Everybody in chat can let us know how our audio is doing. Try to center this. We're having some uh, malfunctions with Zach's computer tonight, guys. So we're going to sit in together. You guys can let me know how the audio is sounding, um, if we have any echo or issues. But I digress. Welcome to the playground. I'm Pixie Phoenix. I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch. I tend to stream uh, MMORPGs, uh, tabletop role-playing games, and every once in a while the random Steam game. I'm joined tonight with uh, by uh, Nox, our storyteller, and a Zach who plays uh, 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 Victor, and I play Alice. And uh, yeah, we're getting. I I marked this as session 51, but I think we're gonna tailor that to a duo session. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is would have been, been 50, 50, but we we didn't, we didn't do 50 because last one week second. Was our chat. One second. I'm going to, I think I'm maybe getting an echo on your side. Give me one no second. I'm going to see about. Okay. Go ahead and chat. No, it's not going to work that way. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> Somebody in chat will let us know something. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, no, last, last week would have been 50, 50 um, but we, we, we did the chat, chat, like the, where we talked talk about things instead. instead. So tonight, tonight would have been 50, 50 uh, but due to uh, personal issues, uh, both Martha, who plays Michael, and Scott, who plays Idaho, neither of them can make it tonight. So instead, rather than trying to delay it another week, we are doing a duo session tonight. So for those who are not familiar with our Monday nights, this is our Monday night. 5th edition Chronicle, Philly by Night, for Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, before we begin, is there anything in particular that you guys were interested in? Were there things that you two were looking to, or endeavoring to investigate or solve? Were there threads that you were attempting to... So I'm assuming this is We still got that rat. The rat. No, the the guy turned into like right. rats. But we have the uh the list as well. I don't think it's been updated. No, I'm, I'm working, working on it. it. There's gotta be some stuff here we have done. Yeah, but it stops at thirty nine. Like there's nothing for the last ten sessions. So no, you don't want to go back and try to wrap something up? We can. We see something down there. I mean, there, there's your large rat right there. Yeah. Um, we're supposed to, yeah, thunder and lightning. Yeah, I wanted to warn you guys. Um, here in Austin, Texas, we're having some pretty bad thunderstorms. We're kind of under a tornado watch at the moment. So uh, if electricity goes out, things like that, um, I probably will not be returning just to make sure I don't fry my electronics. So. <laughs> I don't have anything I can add to that. <laughs> well, it seems like when the, in the years plus that we've been playing, we've each had, like, a bad weather night. Yeah. At, At least, least one. one. Yep. Okie dokie. You thinking Rat King? I think that's an option, yeah. So... Because you know me, I'm all about trying to eliminate the, the, the threats, especially like the, the people that have already come in and, and proven that they, they can do some harm. I'm the bouncer of the club, so that kind of extends to the bouncer of the coterie. You know. So, the... Aside, aside from, from your singular... Um, 
actual incident with him. The only other incidents that you have had with the creature who apparently was has infiltrated your apartments at least once and who has also uh, was pretty solely focused it seemed like at least for a while on Marla. The only real leads that you have um, take you in two wildly different directions. One of those is that you need to find Marla, who you have not been in contact with since you I think we dropped her off at a hospital. Yeah. 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 Opened the door and rolled her out. We dropped her off at a hospital with no name, no nothing. The other lead would have been that you have seen now the and this is only photographic evidence, of course, is that you have seen the something that you think might have been this creature in photo in New York at the McKittrick. So aside from pursuing those two leads, your only other options would be to start hunting down and going through your contacts and connections and attempting to ask them for information uh, trade for information, or perhaps even uh, intimidate or bully into information. So, with that as a beginning, uh, first, before we do anything, we need to do a little bit of housekeeping. Mm -hmm. This one we can just hit any dice but oh, no there's uh, the rouse one that's right you yep buttons i think they no and they now and now like oh wait that sorry ignore that last one i mean it was I mean, the same one same thing so. um if you go here yeah that's why that's why if Look at step some of mine if they have ability holds. Like I've, I've, I should have added like the the abilities. So like I put like rouse check here and stuff. And put like it rolls like like whenever you do bloodhound and it's like wits and aspects. Right. You can put wits and aspects and right. your role is set up and. Then Automatic. Well, I didn't know all those things. <laughs> so, how are your evening begins? One of you is waking up hungrier than the other. So, first things first. Al, how are you starting your evening? I would probably try contacting Marla by phone. I mean, I guess I'd, I would attempt a text first and see if I get anything back. Uh, there's no, uh, when you text Marla, there's no response. Yeah, I'll take a chance. I'll call her. Uh, number is dead. Mm. Um, the, it comes up immediately. It doesn't even ring. It immediately comes right. up as an well, um, then I will text, uh, Nolte, see if he's busy, if he has a moment to chat. He, he gets back to you and is like, he's like, sure, call now. Okay. Yeah. I give him a call. Uh, when he picks up, uh, it is... 
from the background noise, you can tell that he is probably not at his desk. Um, he is probably walking around somewhere. He... When he picks up, he says, What's up? What's going on? I know it always seems I'm calling with a favor. But, um... A close friend of mine, uh has seemed to kind of up and disappeared. Last I heard, she was injured and taken to a hospital. And now she, her phone line's dead. And I was kind of wondering if you had any ins that you could check into things for me. He's like, I mean, <laughs> he's like, if you've got a name and information I can try to social or anything like that. I can try to look in and see if she's been arrested locally or if she's been come up on any charges or if she's got any, something like that. He's like, but we can't cross reference the, the hospitals here. Like that's. But you would at least be like, be able to see if she was deceased. I mean, that would come up. correct. Uh, I mean, if she, uh, he was like, I mean, if she died, like, by violent crime, if she came up as a victim or something like that, that might come up. He's mm. like, but, but if she's, he, he was like, so if, if the, if the information that's been entered is accurate in the system, he goes, then yeah, sure, we can, we can search it, we can find something. He's like, but, but some of those records take some time to get in there. And if you're talking a missing persons case, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, how, how long are we talking? How long has she been missing? How long would it have been by now? Um, Story you telling. guys drew, so that was, the night where, so 43, or that was the same night. Uh, that was also the same night. Uh, it's probably been probably two weeks, maybe longer. Okay. Yeah, I would relay that. He's like, at this point, you're probably better off um, trying to contact friends and family you're better off i mean I'm, if you've got information you can give me i can make a quick search in the database to see if she's come up on any charges or anything like that okay um so but but even if she even if she hopped the river and she ended up going to new jersey and something happened over there like i mean we share some information but okay. I, I appreciate it i really do i'll text you everything he goes all right i'll do what i can thanks So what's Vic doing? So, Vic, how are you starting the evening? Do you still have anyone at the club that's um, injured or in need of care? Or is everyone uh, at, pretty much healed up? And At this point, so basically everybody is kind of on their feet and working. Obviously, obviously... Um, for those who are watching, uh, this does not take place chronologically to the events of what was going on at mm -hmm. 49 and 50. Uh, so any injuries, deaths, or anything like that that may have been in the process of occurring, Robin. Um, <laughs> oh, Robin. Are, are obviously not, um, not in play for this evening. So uh, to answer your question again, Vic, uh, no, there is. Everybody seems to be on the up and up at this point. Okay. I guess I'd be just doing a, a, a security check. You know, everyone place. So when I'm a little you, paranoid. it's not paranoia if they really have to get you. Mm-hmm. 
Um, when you are going, um, along walking outside the building, talking with Romano, getting updates from him, talking to Harvey, kind of getting his perspective on things. It is difficult, Vic, not to feel like you're being watched. It is that feeling that you cultivated from a life of crime when you were alive of constantly having to look over your shoulder and be on the lookout for you know other gangs other mob bosses other you know cops informants snitches it is a feeling you have cultivated when you can tell that you are being observed Any way to tell where from or? Uh, that would be a role. That will be your wits and awareness. <laughs> so that'll be a one and a two for the role. Oh no. Okay. I'm still, I'm still figuring it out. Where is it? Yeah, actually, if there, you click the button then, right next to awareness, there we go. I was doing it the other way around, and she clicked over. no modifiers. No. Nope. Oh. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to blow on the mic. <laughs> uh, you cannot tell. Oh, is that roll? So, knowing what you feel, even if you can't quantify it or prove it, what do you do, Vic? As I let Romano and Harvey know that, just in case they they they're also being watched. I, I guess I could, uh, exile. So, Vic's texting, uh, text Al. I would assume that given this information, Al would, would meet, you know, would head to meet. Yeah, I've got nothing else going on. Okay, so, you two meet up. Where would you be likely to meet up uh this was happening like right outside the club like where you know like Ram romano and harvey usually are by the door i would probably meet right inside the club um like go inside the door and then just second okay when you are there um the it is a somewhat difficult situation you find yourself in because there is not a ton of people who are there, but there is a line this evening. There are a couple people who are waiting outside. Romano and Harvey are getting the uh, doors ready. Robin is inside fixing her bar. Um, the other ghouls running around the club trying to get things ready. You see Ruby and Lane hauling things down. Uh, there is a lot of activity that is kind of going around this area. So what are you, how, what are you going to do here? What is your. Well, what you just want me to use since the unseen, right? Yeah, basically. Just to see if you can do something. I okay. So that's already in there, wits and discipline. Uh, yes, it would be wits and aspect for sense of the unseen. It's got discipline in there. Oh, 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 it's all in there. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Aspect. 
picks. It's not there. Must be. Nope. Must pick. It's not in the drop down. Oh, because it. Wait. Oh, it counts that one? So then what? There would be no discipline? It try, would just be... Try to drop oh. Points. See if this is right. Did we do it right? Uh, your wits and your aspects. Let me double check the numbers there. Three aspects. Mm -hmm. Four wits, so that should be seven dice. That's and you have one hunger. Yep, that's correct. Okay, well, it sucks. Uh, before <laughs> I before I tell you anything, do you want to spend a willpower? Yes. So go up here and just the one that's a, a WP reroll. Yes. It, <laughs> Yeah, but it still so, sucks. <laughs> okay, so you see a couple things. Um, you see Brittany, who is hiding out in one of the booths uh, upstairs, just kind of lurking. Um, you see that among the crowd of people who are outside, uh, there are other, shall we say, actors who are not wanting to be seen who are also waiting in line. Um, you are pretty sure you see a Nos who is reasonably uh, less unattractive than most of them tend to be. Um, his features make him look less monstrous and more like he's just suffered some sort of horrible physical disfigurement like maybe he was in a fire everything is kind of smudged um his lips are smooth um but you can still tell that there were lips there um mm. his features around his eyes again look like maybe they were kind of melted back harvey dent um, yeah, not quite like that, but he's certainly um, he doesn't have the typical um, very Shrek-like features mm. uh, or Shrek-like features from the movies. He looks more like a human being, just a particularly ugly one. Um, there is another... Kindred, who is in line, uh, who looks perfectly normal, just happens to probably be using this to try to get either evade cover or maybe just because they don't want to be seen coming here. Uh, but beyond that, on the outside, there are a number of things, Al, that you see through the doorway. Um, there are kindred on the corners. You see that there are kindred who are completely visible to you, um, who have this inky aura that is trailing around them. Some of them, it's very thin. Some of them, it's almost like a thick outline, almost like a magic marker. Um, some of 
some of them look very, very different in your site. Hmm. I would I would point out each of these figures to Vic and uh, just ask you know what do you want to do? Any of them seem threatening. No good. I understand. Um. Can I use my? Uh, I would use, okay, so... Insight, I would, maybe? Um, I would use... Or a cult? This. No. This like, to be, understand each each aura? Well, now, if you're looking at the for, at the auras, that's pretty... You already know what that is. Oh, okay, means. okay. That that black smudge around them typically means Diablery. Say again? The Diablerized. Diablo, oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Um, if you're looking to attempt to figure out their intent, uh, that's going to be your wits and awareness. Okay. Um, I would, I would say Didn't it does know. not particularly, it does not seem like anyone is like any of them are particularly, okay. uh, out of the way threatening it doesn't seem like any of them are are looming certainly doesn't seem like you know like any, there, anybody seems to have any particular bad intentions uh most of them just seem like they are attempting to stay hidden or you know kind of stay under the radar it seemed kind of close Ooh, spooky. Dramatically um, appropriate. Right. Um, so what? We just keep an eye on them? We approach them? We just keep an eye on Sounds just like downtown Philly. I was about to say. <laughs> you got some ambiance. Mm. You know, there was another shooting down on 6th Street. <laughs> so, with what you've seen and what you know so far, what's your next step? What are you going to do? wasn't a whole lot. I mean, if it doesn't look like anyone out here is threatening not the rat out here. Yeah, but w a lot of times we haven't had to worry about threatening. We've had to worry more about the sly motherfuckers jumping in and doing underhanded shit while smiling in our faces. That's what I'm more worried about. Yeah. So threatening is one thing, but underhanded bullshit up in our club is another. So, I mean, I would say, um, first of all, I'd go ahead and pull Romano aside and point them out, making sure he, you know, once, because once, once you're like attuned to where they are, you can see them, right? Um, if you've got the sight or they've, um, have been like for instance if you bump into somebody then sure it breaks if, their okay but for the people who don't have it they just knowing that somebody is there doesn't magically let them know doesn't magically break it so that, like for instance the kindred who are using who are okay un unseen just pointing them out to him won't to magically break them i uh drag romano over with uh our wristbands Tidy, and I start going ahead of the line with him so that I'm having to, you know, approach each one of them and, and ask for ID and give them their wristband. So that should break Unseen Passage. 
So here, okay, so here is the, are you intentionally attempting to basically make invisible people appear in the middle of a crowd? Well, it, wouldn't Romano be big enough if he kind of shielded? I know that, that's kind of a risk right there. Damn it. Gonna... Like, I would figure that, uh, like, it, maybe that part of the alley's dark enough. I don't know. If everyone around was kindred, then. Yeah. Kind here, you know? Yeah. Fuck, fuck. I thought I was being real clever with those wristbands. Um. <laughs> hey, you work clubs long enough. Oof. I hate working door. Um. Then I will hang at the door with the boys until these people have entered. And then I, since I have the sight, I would end up following them into the club and trying to monitor. So when you say follow them into the club and try to monitor, are you actually going to attempt to follow them in and accost them and nope. like see what they're doing or just try just to like, observe them in and observe just observe um, if they're as, cool as, we're cool we've always had that stance in the club you don't fuck with us we won't fuck with you but too much um, fuckery as, lately uh as they come in um the you notice that the um the nos who looks like he's been kind of smudged um actually makes a beeline one piece inside and goes straight for Brittany. And they seem to disappear downstairs to the dance floor area and kind of vanish into wherever. Um, the rest of them just seem to be kind of going about their business. There doesn't appear to be anything. Some of them consort with other kindred. Some of them are... Oh, no, this um, is enormous. Every night, like... Yeah, they're they're like the there's nothing that seems to be uh, particularly sketchy. Certainly nothing, no more sketchy than what your average can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I guess at this point, then I would start checking the bars if I'm confident that there's no bullshit. Of, you know. But uh, yeah. Probably head to Ruby first. Ruby and Lane. Uh, so when you get to, so are you heading to Ruby or Lane? Because those are two separate bars. Oh, that's right. We moved her. Uh, Ruby first then. So when you get to your bar, which where Ruby is the secondary bartender there, um, it is a pretty quiet night. Um, none of the Thin Bloods are there. Uh, none of the the people who um, none of your regulars are there. Uh, okay. There are a couple people there who are ordering drinks, who are talking to Ruby. You're pretty sure you've seen them there. You think maybe she's starting to build up a little bit of a clientele of her own. Good. Um, but it doesn't. She, you know, she's happy to see you. She runs over and gives you a kiss on the cheek, but. Uh, there's enough people there that are that are need help and need serving as they're coming in, and she's setting up tabs and stuff like that. So she doesn't have a whole lot of time to chat with you. Okay. No, I would uh, just mainly want to make sure that she's got what she needs, she's confident, she's comfortable, and that she's not being bothered by anybody. That's really my main. I'm, I'm playing manager here, just touching on each of the bars. So if she's okay, I would probably go to Lane. Uh, Lane is in basically the same, uh, same category. She's got a ton of people who are there. Uh, she's definitely developed her own clientele. Mm -hmm. she's, you know, she's joking with people. She's got people who are hanging around. Um, she is, she's doing good. She's definitely, you know, got her own thing going on. Um, But while you are there at the bar watching over her, Hal, there is 
a creeping feeling. that feels like it's going up your spine and it feels the way that ice slowly cracking feels and sounds. You can hear them in your voice those multitude of voices in the back of your head. And the slow whisper. Says, you didn't think you were done, right? Can I tell if this is the cobweb or an external force? It's definitely an, it's definitely the cobweb. Okay. You hear another creaky voice somewhere in your mind that says, rats in the walls. You were just like rats in the walls. Hmm. Well... We've been called worse. And if, yeah, I mean, if everything's cool here at, at her bar, uh, last stop would be up to Robin's bar or down, wherever. Uh, when you get head upstairs to Robin's bar, the brand new backdrop has been replaced unlike everywhere else that has mirrors behind uh the bar here instead uh that's gone padded wall yeah in case that happens again um the um Glass. all all of the all of the shelving uh where all of the liquor rather than being on the kind of uh underlit Mm -hmm. um, glass bar shelves that were downstairs that were in the other part of the bar. Here at this bar, uh, they are actually um, like graded metal um, that allows for light to still come up from underneath, but definitely allows for uh, less glass shattering. Um, it gives the bar a slightly more industrial look. Um, which is in the clientele that is showing up there. Um, the clientele who are coming to, up to Robin's bar, uh, there are a few kindred who are there. You think there's maybe a ghoul that you've seen there before. There are a variety of people there. And unlike the downstairs area, um, this crowd seems a lot more clickish. They're less, it's less of an affable crowd. These people are definitely a lot more insular with one another. Um, mm. There's a kind of an edge in the air here. And is anyone in this group one of the one of the people well, I, I saw outside? Uh, no, there are okay. multiple groups that are here. It's not just one click that's kind of grouping up the way like the Thin Bloods oh, do okay. down at the it's end numbers. of Robin. It's, it's, it's numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is funny you brought that up because when he was describing the underlip bar, I was reminded of 1415. Mm -hmm. They had that really nice bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those were the days... So, what, what are the two of you going to do now? You still at the door or are you coming in? 
I'm 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 good. I'm good. Marla, is there is there for us to look in? Yeah, have I heard back from Nolte yet? Uh he he basically when he's texted you back, it's been a the effective answer has been no answer. That there's no no information has come up. The only thing he basically the only positive information that he passes around is is that um she hasn't she wasn't arrested here. If she's been arrested or if she's dead, she it didn't come up on a, here. Okay. I send him a thank you text. Sorry, we just got a weather alert. Apparently there's golf ball size hail. So I'm, I know that window's awful. Just I hate to interrupt. I just uh keeping an eye no on things. Uh Yeah, I mean if Mm -hmm. I was kind of hoping I'd get a lead on Marla. That was kind of where. Um, Maybe. I do have points in tech. Do the old fails. bait and switch. And if that fails, I Try to seduce the, and seduce the nurse. And <laughs> I think I was much of a swab. You know? <laughs> yeah, we've seen Charlie try that with the waitress. I don't think you'd fare much better. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Let's. Uh, I'll go see if uh, Vic wants to accompany me since he's got better drive. I'll have one in drive. I do not. Do you? <laughs> I thought I had at one point, but then I went looking and I was like, oops. There should just be another one down there that says yeet. That would be for me. I was going to say you would get default points in yeet. That's right. So, so yeah, we'll head to the to the hospital. See if we can find some records. So when you get to the hospital, the... It is not nearly as bad as perhaps your um, your mind's eye had painted it due to to the news and to other things going on. Um, there are definitely a lot of people. There's definitely a lot of sick people here, um, but it is also not nearly as bad as you knew it was even six to eight months ago. Um, with that said. When you guys walk through the front doors at the hospital, uh, the it is really easy to tell that the people who are working at the front desk are overworked, underpaid, mm -hmm. and definitely underslept, as they barely even look up when you come in um i'd probably ask for administration or records uh the the gentleman sitting there kind of looks lifts a lazy eye when he sees you alice um he doesn't startle but you can see the blood drain from his face a little bit. Um, he's keeping his cool, but you can tell that he doesn't want to. He clears his throat. <clears throat> he goes... If you are looking for a patient here, 
or you have an appointment with a doctor here, he goes, uh, I can look that information up for you. He's like, uh, but administration records are, of course, off limits to, to anybody other than faculty. Sorry. Uh, well, um, I'm actually looking for my sister. Um, she's been missing for a couple weeks now. We've been checking the local hospitals. Uh, I was just wondering if maybe she's been through here. Um, make a, persuasion. I was going to say charisma and per, uh, persuasion role. When he hears, um, oh. he, he nods and he goes, he goes, I get it. He goes, we've, we've had a lot of those. I goes, uh, what's, what's her name? I, uh, give, give him Marla's name, birth date. Um, if he needs anything else. He had all that information that he just said they were your record. Giving them to you because they were yours. If you say your records, they ask for ID. You know this. We've been through this in hospitals. So when you give them him this, he looks it up and he he nods. He goes, "Oh, um." He goes, "Well, uh, I." I hate to give you this information. She's not here. She was discharged a couple days ago. My goodness. Um, was she discharged to anyone's care or ever on her own? Uh, he is. He clicks through for a couple minutes. He's going through different things. He says, um, He goes. It it doesn't. There's no note. He said uh, the the only the only note about uh, about the discharge was that it was against uh, doctor's wishes. Mm. Um, he he looks at the the files on the computer, and he seems to be scrolling. And he keeps kind of glancing up at you and scrolling some more. And mm -hmm. He he's, look, um, he's like, there's <laughs> he's just. I don't want to be the one to give you this information about your sister. But if she's not dead yet, she's probably dead soon. Cancer? Uh, everything but. He's, he's looking through the files and or through the folders. He's like, He's like, I've never seen anybody who's had this many separate individual. He's like, there's, there's, there's blood parasites here. He goes, there is, uh, he goes, um, <laughs> she tested positive for, uh, for from like two different types of fever. I've never even heard of that. He's he's like she's he's he's like I'm not trying to be to be mean here. I'm saying like he's like I've seen junkies come in here with cleaner records than this. Like she's mm -hmm. she's very very ill. She should never have been discharged. I appreciate you guys for trying to keep her here. Um, yeah, she's been gone for some time now. Probably, obviously, hanging out with the wrong crowd. 
I mean, I'm just doing everything I can to find her. Uh, I really appreciate this information. He scrolls a little bit more. He goes, about, about the only thing, he's like, I mean, I can give you her her room number i guess i don't know if you want to head up to that floor and maybe talk to the nurses or something and see uh if they can give you some in information on where if they maybe saw her if, if no I, I definitely if, if if i'm allowed up on that floor I'll, I'll head up there right now he yeah he says i will I'll call, he goes, I'll, I'll call ahead. He goes, uh, he goes, fourth floor, uh, when you exit the elevator, head to take a left, head to the first intersection and take a right. He goes, there's a nurse's station down there. He goes, uh, you're looking for, he goes and looks at the notes. Uh, he goes, it's Liz. Liz is the, was the was her primary nurse. All right, thank you very much. And we head over to the elevators. As you head up, the. As you, excuse me, let me rephrase. When you get to the elevators, you step in, you hit for the floor you want to go to. As the doors close, you hear a voice, a man's voice, say, hold on, coming up. And a pale, pasty hand shoots between the doors and holds them. He is dressed suit vest tie, no jacket, suit pants, and heavy work boots that are caked in mud. Hmm. He steps on. He looks at the two of you gives what looks like more of a grimace than a smile and hits for two floors above where you were heading and steps to the very back of the elevator. I look at Vic and I go, Can I tell if he's human or vampire? Oh no, you would know that smell anywhere. That fetid, awful, corpseish smell. Not only are you absolutely certain that he is kindred, you are absolutely certain that he is a member of the Hakata. Ooh. Hmm. seems like a good opportunity where is this in timeline uh it is currently out of timeline but for uh, for purposes relevant to to this evening uh it would take place let's say after session 50 so it's 
So this has not yet happened as far as the main story has is concerned, but will happen. Is there anything weird about him being here? I mean, aside from the fact that he is, his dress is perhaps a little strange. I mean, wearing really nice, almost business attire, and then muddy workman's boots uh, definitely is a bit of a style clash there. On the other hand, uh, there are, of course, some Hakata out there who would probably consider that dressing in nice uh, business attire while also making sure to have workman's boots so you don't, you know, step on something while you're digging up a grave or something mm -hmm. like that might be considered completely normal. Tell Charles we... <laughs> so, do you... I think I would just uh, say a friendly hello, quick nod... See if he responds and uh, make note of the floor he's going up to. Uh, he... He, says... mm -hmm. uh, he gives you the briefest of nods uh, when you acknowledge him, but he doesn't... He basically acknowledges you in kind, uh, but he doesn't do anything more than... than basically the barest minimum to acknowledge. Okay. You got anything to say? I said say hi to Charles. <laughs> when... I mean, Carmine. Sorry, not Charles. I don't know why I had Charles on the... I always mix them say, up. Say hi to Carmine. When you say Carmine's name, um, there is a switch. You can see the muscles in his face contracting as if he wants to have a response. Uh, but he doesn't. And before anything else is said or done, the elevator bell rings and the doors open for your floor. Yeah, we'll take our leave. Get an impression. <laughs> I ain't no bitch. Um, yeah, we'll make our way uh, down the hall, take the right to the nurse's station. I said down the hall. When you when you get to the nurse's station, uh, Liz is a slightly older, short, plump woman who looks like she desperately needs a cigarette when when you come up to the station she if I don't got enough work tonight Jesus Christ she goes she goes that was your sister yeah she's been a handful since her teen years, believe me. She goes. She was, she was definitely something else when she was here. Kept trying to tell people about 
weird things that she'd seen about some some bar and a floor somewhere and about how there was an invisible person who was stalking her and uh, hmm. she didn't say she was religious but she seemed like she was spouting a lot of religious shit but hmm. she he said she he said she was really weird. She just uh, she was she was here. She was we were giving her blood transfusions. She was seeing a doctor here. There was some some people here who were taking up donations to try to help her because God knows she needs some help. And uh, she seemed you know I mean rant and raven. She she seemed like she she wanted help. And yet she left anyway. Yeah, she said the last time, the last time, the last time that I saw her, uh, she she seemed like she she was she genuinely wanted to to get better and to 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 get things figured out. Uh, kept talking about how she had some some girly thing waiting for her that she was in love with. She was gonna fix things with, but hmm. but uh. Well, we've tried last, to go ahead. That was the last shift that that was the last time I saw her on shift was a couple of days ago, and then I came back the next morning and she was gone. Left a couple of things behind, but nothing really of consequence. Is there a way that I could claim those things? She goes, I, I, sure. The nurse goes behind the. the nurse's station and reaches into a drawer uh, in the drawer there is a baggie um, it is it looks like maybe a you know a t-shirt there's a small black folding phone um, couple other scraps of things it's it's pretty inconsequential yeah she... um, okay so the phone would have been turned off then okay she pushes it across the the nurse's station to you And she tells you, she goes, she goes, I don't know how much that, uh, that he told you downstairs, but he goes, but your sister is, she's in a bad way. He goes, she needs to be, she needs a lot of help. I don't, she goes, I don't, she, she said, I don't know how she was in such good shape with how many different problems she had going on inside her. Yeah, we've been <clears throat> trying to get her uh, looked at for schizophrenia for some time, but I'm sure you know how difficult that can be with people that don't want to cope with it. She, she nods and she goes, yeah. She goes, had a brother. He uh, couldn't hang. So he hung. I'm sorry for your loss. I'll uh, I'll quit bothering you now. But thank you so much for your help. She goes. Try to find your your sister, and uh, at the very least, said so maybe she's spouting crazy shit says but don't let them give her an unmarked grave I said make sure she gets proper proper burial we're trying 
Believe me. You ready to go, Vic? So. So, as we head to the elevator, I, uh, look over at Vic and say, uh, you want to go creep up on six? Follow the pasty man. Follow the, follow the mud trail. <laughs> Where he left the trail. So, is are you guys going down or going up? So, as you get into the back into the elevator, uh, Vic is indeed true. Uh, there is uh, some muddy scuffs on the floor of the elevator that are reasonably fresh. Heading up to six, Vic, it is not terribly difficult to smell where he is or was going. But when you get to the floor, Vic, and the elevator doors open, there is something else here. It's a familiar smell. But you can't put your finger on it. Is there a roll for it? <laughs> um... Do I need to use share senses and see if I recognize it? <laughs> uh, if Vic, if you wanted to attempt to figure out what it is, it would be your intelligence and awareness. So go up here. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, that's down here. Okay, sorry. You said wits. Yep. Uh, intelligence. Intelligence. Sorry. Hey. When you smell it again, it is. It reminds you of a place in New York that you used to go sometimes on the weekends where they used to have just handmade breads and pasta and all of these just wonderful, wonderful cannolis and just amazing things that were done. And it wasn't the, the breads or the pasta or the desserts that was always what you remembered the most about it was is, is that they used to, they were the cooks and stuff that were so careless with tossing the dough and the sugar and things so the entire floor of this place was semi-permeated with what was basically flour and sugar and they used a real particular flour mixture that had a real it had a real interesting smell so anyone who went in there who happened to be you know in there for more than a couple minutes or who leaned on things or who um, sat at tables who actually ate there ordered boxes of stuff always ended up with some of this flour and sugar mix on their shoes on their hands on their 
you know, the like when I used to work at home. Whataburger and I came home smelling like fries every night. It was not quite that delicious. But, <laughs> um, but is the it became kind of a uh, of a running gag amongst you and your family, both your wife and your kids, and also the family whenever anybody would go run by this place to get any of the food that people would come out of there smelling like that. People would always be like, oh, you went by Agonelli's again. You can smell that here. Interesting. I don't think there's a cafeteria on the sixth floor either, huh? There is definitely not a cafeteria anywhere near here. Can you tell if the smell is this is coming from that guy or a different source? I I don't I think it can't it's coming from the floor in general because if, if it would have come from that guy, we would have smelled it when he was on the elevator with us, right? Uh yes. It, it, you smell it when you got uh, to oh, this floor. When we got okay. The elevator okay. On the sixth floor then. Hmm. So whole floor up so then do you think you can track down the source maybe what you gotta roll for that uh for so what are you attempting to to track are you attempting to track the Hakata or the Sweet smell. I'm kind of more interested in the Hakata. Okay. That yeah, should just be kind of like following all the dirt, all the mud prints on the. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna get down so, all fours like a, bl- like a hound? I think that's necessary. So, following the Hakata is not terribly difficult between the smell and the. Uh, and the mud. The when you get down the hallway, there is a group of, or shall I say, a couple of guys who are dressed. Almost comically suspiciously like thugs, like black shades, crew cuts, the charcoal colored suits with the white shirt and tie, who are standing guard by. by a door they look almost like to the point of parody great So what are you going to? Go on, man. Go introduce yourself. Just make something up. That's all I've been doing. Because we're nosy motherfuckers. Um, I mean, I say one of us approach these guys, see what the hell's going on. I 
I know all the cats are hovering. Sorry, they're distracting. Um, guess I could approach and try a slightly uh, flirty persuasion and see if I can get out of them what they're doing here. Uh, Would it be persuasion to, to coax that out of them? So, so okay. So here's the question: Are you attempting to what? Okay, so what are you attempting to do? Like, are you attempting to like get them to? reveal something are you attempting to ingratiate yourself with them so you can actually have a conversation with them are you i guess i'd try just you know just approaching for conversation and, and then if i get like a bad feel like they they ain't having it or they're starting to put their walls up then i would take it a step further uh okay so we're going to say charisma and we'll say performance okay um but you're gonna need a pretty high number of successes here come on everybody in chat cross them fingers and <laughs> good roll Before I tell you, do you want to spend a willpower to reroll? Yes. Really? Uh, oh. So just do one? That? Okay. Yes. So. When you walk out, one of the guys immediately makes a motion like he's reaching into his jacket for something. The other guy startles a bit. And is like... He's like, sorry, we're on a, we're on duty here. I don't think anybody sent for any sort of special services or anything like that. Oh God, don't even flatter yourself. He goes, and I don't think he's in any condition in which he would need any special services. So she goes, he goes, I don't know if, if if somebody is sending you as a joke or something like that, but it's not really appropriate right now. So is this the way you treat any Joe Schmo walking up to start a conversation with you or just the one with tits? I just came up to say what was what, man. I sorry for bothering you, shit. He's like, well, you know, you see a couple guys who looking like us. Most people don't tend to walk up on us, which means the only reason you'd be walking up on us, particularly with a guy like you behind you, is either you were sent here. Does he really look like he is the one protecting me out of the two of us? The two of them look at him and then look at you and go. As he's like four feet behind, like. What? Yeah, no, man, kind of I just noticed, you know, two dudes sitting up here by themselves and. Hospital is not always the place to be by yourself. I thought I'd say hi. Be, you know, fucking nice. The second guy who has relaxed a little bit and he's like, looks at the other guy. He goes, 
it'd be a little weird for her to bring her pimp up here like that. God. Unless I just like the watch. Oh, God, Vic, <laughs> shut the fuck up. I smack him real hard on the chest. The first guy is like, see? Some guys like that. We knew a guy, remember? <laughs> oh, are we continuing bingo? Uh, just on ourselves? I guess so. The first guy looks at the second guy. He goes, you know, I... There was that guy in Houston. He, you know... His girls, oh, he put them in some awful situations. They loved him anyways. I know, he never, he's so dumb. Not you, the cat. They, they both look at you and are like, so, uh, so yeah, uh, kind of a bad time. Maybe he's not family, not really interested in being around right now. So. But he doesn't seem like he's going to share anything more than that. Uh, no. Questioning, questioning, questioning. Do I pull on the, the... Okay, let's break this down. So far, we figured out that they're working for somebody. Probably. Hakata. With probably. Can we tell if they smell the same way as, as the guy in the elevator? They don't smell the same way, precisely. They smell... Vic, you would know this, so I will tell uh, say, uh, share this. They smell the same way that Carmelo smelled. Oh. You sure? You don't want to have a little fun? Get into a little trouble? If you want to go, we can go, man. So far, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't know. Have we been this close to him? And in, in, when was the last time we were this close to Carmine? Carmelo. Carmelo, sorry. Carmelo is the, the, the uh, not Carmine, the one that, that actually, like, earned, like, got Carmine, uh, imprisoned oh 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 and he took over like took over our club yeah for a while and then that's the the one that uh there's too many c names yeah that's the one that michael uh uh flat did her 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 uh him. new blink did, did his blink oh and drained him in, in in front of her touchdown oh yeah it was in touchdown hmm? i mean enough to it wasn't gonna be it wasn't gonna be it was i'll just as some kind of momentary behind the scenes it wasn't gonna be that severe of a problem like it was gonna be a masquerade breach but it wasn't gonna be that severe of a problem but michael rolled like fucking crits on that and i was just i was just like well <laughs> well i mean i've accomplished my goals it's up to you what else we do here before we head back. You think I might, you might be sending word to Car Carmine? Just in case there's any underhand shit going on. Trying to mm -hmm. undermine the game again. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. So what are you guys going to do? 
Let me look for Marla. Honestly, like with start of the night. Find it, especially. True, but I mean, what kind of leads do we have at this point? Um, the phone that I got, does it have any charge left? No, it's completely dead. Okay, yeah, I want to get that on a charger as soon as possible. So you guys are going to, so you guys are going to leave the guys who think you're a hooker and head out? I mean, if we don't really see them coming forward with any other information... Yeah, and they smell like him too, so. But is that really enough? I mean, what if they smell like him because they're protecting him, but they're there for a different reason? Well, I so let me be more specific since I, I think you're reading a little bit too much into Carmelo. What I okay. mean by that is, is um, so Carmelo, even though he was human, still smelled because they're all basically related like that kind of fetid smell um, it just wasn't quite as strong as it is with the actually fully churned so so oh, he's a dust porn so no what these could be oh, yeah. anything from oh. just humans to ghouls to but they are definitely members of of the clan okay okay Alright. Yeah, if you've got nothing to say, Vic, I, I got nothing. Should we invite him to the club? Give him a business card. Give him a business card. A couple of drink tickets. Hey man, come visit us sometime. If you like, you know, to have some drinks. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Be like, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a hooker, but I do run a nightclub. When you hand the business cards over, both of them at the "I'm not a hooker" line, both of them look at you and are both like, "Sure." And after I hand them my card, and they look down and look back up, I slowly give them a rising finger and a smile. Not too many hookers run their own nightclubs, baby. The second, first guy kind of nods, and the second guy goes, I mean, been to Nevada. Yeah, and that's why there's only certain laws in Nevada, baby. <laughs> but yes, if you can find it in your heart of hearts to quit objectifying all the women that you see as hookers, then uh, please feel free to come to my establishment sometime. The first guy is like, I don't see all women as hookers. The second guy goes, he doesn't see your, your wife as a hooker. He goes, yeah, because your ex-wife. He goes, well... And at that, gentlemen, I will take my leave. And at that, just to prove my point, I say, uh, Victor, I'm ready to leave. So Pick her up by the throat. <laughs> Ooh, poor play. Yes, bitch. <laughs> so, as you head out into the Philadelphia evening to pursue your new new potential leads. This seems like an appropriate place for a bio break. Bio break, everybody. So we will be back in 10. Yep, yep. All right, everybody stick around. Uh, thank you for understa being understanding about our technical difficulties. Zach's camera crapped out at the last minute so we're hanging out in here together but yeah everybody uh bio break go get a smoke a drink and we will be back here in about 10 ish all right
All right, we should be back, everybody. Thanks for joining me on the playground. I'm Pixie Phoenix. I'm a full-time variety streamer here on Twitch. And tonight, you're joining us for our weekly Vampire the Masquerade live-action role-playing session. I'm joined tonight by Knox, our storyteller, and Zach, who plays Vic, and I'm your Alice. And we shall get back into it. So, when we left off, our intrepid kindred, not pimp and hoe, left the hospital with a little bit of information, perhaps too little information, on what was going on with the Hikata, but with what they came for, which was the leftover effects of Marla. So, you are on your way from the hotel, or for, excuse me, hospital. Same thing. With <laughs> Marla's hospital blood bank. <laughs> um, what are, what is your next step? What are you going to do? Plugged in. Charged in. I have an adequate charger in the car, I would do it start there, but uh yeah, I think we'd be heading back to the club. Okay, so find a charger on the way there if we don't have uh it's just a it's just a what are the like the old school USB minis. Um when you get back to the club and get it charged in even a little bit, uh and you open it up. Um, the phone is not entirely unused, um, but it's like one of those, like, uh, pay by the minute type things where you, you, know, you buy a card, you enter the information from the card. And, and, um, There's nothing going over it. There's nothing particularly uh, incriminating or certainly that indicates a next target. There's a couple texts that have gone back and forth between you and her Al from way back when. Um, but even the call log is, there's nothing recent. Absolutely nothing as of the, her being admitted to the hospital. Even before that, there wasn't anything like she wasn't like when she, she was in the apartments. There wasn't anything dating back to that time period. To no pictures, no, no. No. Track the G. Oh, I mean the phone's not with her. Right, but just see um, if it. If it showed up somewhere actually speaking of tech would i be able to possibly use my tech skills to um like thinking of hacking but who would i hack the hospital has told me all they can if Nolte's told me all he can. Pretty. Catch people over the hospital. Or security camp. The hospital. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's actually not what a bad idea. She went. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd like to roll my technology and see if I can hack the hospital camera or just hack the hospital and get access to. Uh, if you were attempting to, you know. Uh, so I will give this one. You if you know that there is no way that you would be able to conduct anything like that from where you are. If you were going to attempt to do that, you'd have to not only be at the hospital, you'd have to be have, get access to the hospital, yeah, security, and then have to go through any of their archives through that. And you also 
would know that that would probably mean time consumption because there's going to be a lot of cameras. Any way we could hire maybe a NOS friend or a friend that uh, has high tech that can go unseen that we could possibly hire to do this kind of work? Uh, the NOS, that is certainly something that the NOS could do. But you would, again, so that's one of those things. Best contact and do it. Does anybody owe us? Best contact. Other. Written is probably. Unless we wanted to reach out to Sunny, but Sunny's kind of. Got, got her old. Brittany, Brittany, Sonny. So what if we shoot each of them a text telling them that we have a business proposition? Well, we're at the, we're at, back at the, at the club, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, if we've made Brittany's, it there right now. Brittany's just upstairs in the, right, probably. but Sonny? Sonny, we'd have to, Sonny, we'd have to read. Okay. Too, but Brittany's in our club. So yeah, I, I guess we'd go to Brittany first and approach Brittany about this idea. So, Brittany is actually not upstairs. She is in the green room, as mm. she always is, uh, with her friend. So, when you guys head to find uh, find them, they are uh, hanging out in the green room. Um, just kind of chatting when you come in. Uh, Brittany sees you and waves. Uh, the other gentleman uh, just kind of like he, he like nods an acknowledgement, but he doesn't actually say anything. Like he looks kind of uncomfortable. I would just approach and say, uh, Brittany, do you have a moment to discuss something? Are we interrupting anything? Um, she looks at him and in a raspy voice, she is, uh, she's like, be right back. Um, he kind of fades into the corner a little bit. She, she's, she looks at you and she's like, what can, what's going on? Well, I've uh, lost track of. Well, wait. First of all, a uh, little meta discussion. Does did Brittany ever meet Marla? They uh, were they in the house no. at the same time. Uh, so they would have been around at the same time, but they probably would never have met. Okay. Um, I would just say, um, a uh, friend of mine was dropped off at the hospital. And it turns out she's very, very sick, but she checked herself out and has not been in communication that anyone I know with anyone that we know of. I was just wondering with maybe some of your tech skills, you might make some kind of deal that I could possibly hire you to find some information for me. She she kind of gives you kind of like a helpless look and she's kind of like, I'm, she's like, I'm good with some things, but like, I'm not like, like if you need me to like, to like fix something mechanical, she's like, I'm probably better at that. She's like, but, but like actually like, like computer stuff, she's like, I'm not very good with software. She's like, I was always more of a hardware. Uh, so more of a tinker. She's kind of. I understand. Um, she goes, but I mean, if you're looking for leads, don't you have that uh, that thing you you can do where you touch stuff? And I mean, you did it up at the at Kai's apartment. Skill. 
thought that was like a random thing that happened. No, that's that's actually one of. Oh, okay. That's something. Is it, pre is it premonition? Uh, the description for premonition. Uh, premonition. The vampire experiences flashes of insight. They may take the form of raised tackles, sudden inspiration, or even vi vi uh, vivid visions. While never too precise, these visions can nudge the vampire out of harm's way or reveal a truth previously unlooked. Cost. Free or one rouse tech. The dice pool is your resolve and your aspects. System. Whenever appropriate, this power gives the character a sudden hint that leads them in, that aids them in some way, letting them find a clue they've missed or saving them from danger. Uh, Whether it gives the character a sudden vision of themselves walking into a trap and inviting red glow over the second right turn during a chase, or the brief flash of a skeleton beneath the floorboards in the prince's office, this power always gives the license, the storyteller license, to subtly speed up play or move the story on to a desired track. The user can also provoke a premonition by focusing on a, su a subject, making a rouse check, and rolling resolve and aspects. The number of successes rolled determines the level of insight on the subject, if any. Yeah, let's try that. Resolve and... So it's rouse check first. Oh, rouse. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. says resolve already so what else do i pick uh it would be your resolve and discipline discipline oh do you want to re-roll two less now remember your religious association allows you to take a point of aggravated damage to restore some to restore a point of even up to aggravated willpower damage. So okay. you have I'm a fall depending back. on how she was gonna say depending on how gutsy you feel and how much your will damage you're willing to do to yourself, you potentially have quite a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go ahead and spend one three. So when you touch, your fingers run over the shirt that was in the bag. There is a flash in your head. It's not much. It is a just brief image of a river of her walking alongside it. But the river is not where it should be because you recognize the background behind her you recognize that the buildings in the background are more like someplace you've already been. A warehouse near some train tracks. Just where I was with Robin in another group? No. Okay, okay. 
and a whole bunch of shipping containers that used to house a club once upon a time. Place got burned down. Is that not thrift? Uh, wasn't that Sabine's, Sabine's old place? original place? Sabine's original. Okay. Oh, we know where that is. Oh. You up for another trip tonight? Do it. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we're going to drive out there. So, before you head out there, what do you... Do you tell anybody what you're doing? Do you... Well, I think we'd the first thing we'd always do is send a group text to everyone on the club group text, letting them know where we're going, that we're taking the car. Yeah, the lead possibly on Marla. And uh, I'm pretty sure this goes without saying because I, I've almost always said it like before I leave the apartment, but I've got my pistol. Mm -hmm. I've got my brass knocks. I've got stubby. So we're armed to the teeth. Stubby too. So, when you head out there, the when you get to the parking lot where Sabine used to park her neon green challenger there's nothing out there the warehouse is still standing they used to house the containers but as you walk up the containers are all gone where the club used to be it's been completely co oh, pushed in with concrete just completely filled with broken pieces of concrete, almost like somebody just took a bulldozer and just started shoveling shit in there. Any different from the last time we were? It doesn't. In fact, the warehouse here looks almost untouched. Looking around, it doesn't look like anybody's been here since the last time you guys were here when you used it to hide out that one night. Is your sense of smell strong enough? Like, you smelled like the, the pizza place. Like, it, it, would you be able to smell her effects and see if there's a whiff of anything around? Is that, does that work with Bloodhound? Uh, you could. The, that is going to be... Finger. That will be a roll. Uh, we will say that's going to be your wits and... I would have said investigation, but you don't have investigation. So we'll say wits and awareness, and you're going to basically need to get a perfect roll on this. Can I help? No. Damn. You can't You can't help his nose. Sorry. <laughs> I rouse the blood? Uh, you could indeed rouse the blood to raise your wits temporarily. Okay. Oh. And you get Got a few before we go. I do. I as do. you as you draw the cloth to your face, the beast seizes up in your stomach. <laughs> Way to shit the bed, Vic. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh so, well, I got hungry. Here. Oh, there's That's a thing. Um, got Marla. Being, being a, a a kind of shipping yard area, would there happen to be any security cameras around? 
Now this place is like, this place is old. Like classic. this is not this is not a particular kind of place that's even been in recent use. Like the train tracks here are basically rusted over. Interesting uh, to check the place for that. Yeah. Before we decide to make any other rolls, I think we would just kind of walk the grounds and see if we notice anything out of place, odd smells. Vic, as you are walking, particularly as you guys head near the... the hatch there is a feeling like you were being watched it's that same kind of feeling that you had earlier this evening I can roll uh, some see unseen. That's with discipline. Uh, yes, it would be wits and discipline. You don't see anything that is out of the ordinary here. There's certainly nothing supernatural that's out here. Should I just get loud and see who decides to respond? That would scare, scare him off. Scare Marla off. Say we open the hatch. Yeah, let's, let's see what's down there. When you open the hatch, looking down, you see two things. You see what looks like a woman's leg sticking out from one of the side doors where you know Sabine's office is and a what looks like Brand new phone. Hmm. By her foot. Yeah, we. I'd approach. So you are. So you. So we, the hatch is open. You're looking down. Oh, okay. Hello? Anyone in there? Oh, no, first. Sure. So, Vic, you drop in. I'll, you follow after. So, what do you do when you hit the ground? About phones. Kind of yeah, flash lights get lights. <laughs> so, as you... approach the body on the ground. Um, there are two things that, three things that become apparent very quickly. One, this person is alive. Um, two, they are 
wearing Marla's clothes. And All three, right. they are not Marla. I'm going to try to get the person who's conscious. No. Vic, you can smell on them. Um, they are... You have only smelled this a few times in recent history. It used to be a lot more popular. Uh, this girl, whoever she is, uh, is high out of her mind and unconscious on morphine. Morphine? Morphine. Oh. Okay. The phone rings. What does the caller ID say? Uh, there's... It's a flip phone. There's no screen on the outside. I had, chicken and waffles. I had a flip phone that had a screen on the outside. I guess this sucks. <laughs> yeah, we, I, I say, like, answer it with some kind of innocuous business name to see how the person responds. There's a snicker on the other side of the phone. And then you hear a voice that says, you know what junkies are the best possible thing for? I have a feeling you're going to tell us. Bait. Yeah, says, I kind of knew you were going to say that. It's not entirely original. As he says, bait. The hatch slams shut. And there is the sound of something heavy in the distance being dragged. Probably push the grate open before before the, it they drag something on top of it. Uh, Try to rush, the, rush the hatch. Vic <clears throat> that will be so this is actually going to be two separate rolls because this is not the hatch is not at ground level it's on the ceiling right so you are going to have to basically climb up the ladder fast enough to grab onto the hatch and then use that for that to try to jack the hatch up because the hatch is already sealed. So you are at this point attempting to use all of your superhuman strength to, to rip this door open and keep it open before. Right, because this is the first roll. <clears throat> right. I'm saying, like, I can add my celerity rating oh. to the user's dice pool for non-combat dexterity tests. Yeah. But I'd have to do a rouse check. <laughs> and I'm already at three. Well, maybe you'll feast out. <clears throat> and just fly up there and blow the hatch off like Astro Boy. So... What are you going to do? Well, if I beast out with you in a hole, you're not going to make it out alive. If I could beast out getting stuck in a hole with you, only mm -hmm. one of us is making it out. I'll be like, I'm going to run and hide real quick, then you roll. So I'm, I'm going to avoid the rouse. Uh, what what, what okay. roll? So the first roll would be 
your dex and athletics. This is to your speed to get up to the hatch and grab onto it. It's not a particularly hard roll for you. Everybody cross your fingers. Mm. Oof. Willpower. I was saying it's about a willpower on this one. All right, reroll two. Mm. Okay. Uh, get enough to grab onto it. So the next roll is going to be your strength and athletics. Like Tinkerbell, we all gotta clap. Look. Man. Clap. Willpower. All it. Oh. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Your. This is one of those ones where it's a win, but maybe it's a win you don't really want. So you shove, you climb the ladder as quickly as you can, and when you get to the top, you grab onto the edges, and you just heave. And you can hear, Alice, the hinge on the plate literally shear off it's like a metallic scream as it's if you can rip a car door off you can rip a hatch off vic just pushes through with a giant roar but as he does it and he shoves it there is only a moment before you hear a oh shit and he drops back down as what looks like a bulldozer just shovels a metric ton of shit down the what would have been on top of the hole but now it's just down into the hole okay first thing i'm doing is calling the club for backup 911 we need help now so you are calling so what do you just to to go over it so you're calling the club to are you calling anybody specific or are you just texting the, just the general number actually the first thing i would do is text the group message um our location using maps so okay. they know exactly where we are and then i start calling okay whoever will answer okay vic what do you do uh, i guess i'm trying to clear rubble trying to find a way out uh Okay, so you're gonna start. You're gonna start digging, trying to dig. Well, your theoretically, way out. if the guy is dozing over, he's gonna have to make a pass, and the hatch isn't gonna fill on the on the first pass. So if we wait for the bulldozer to move, is, is there rubble blocking our way out? Oh yeah, no. He like there's he shoveled a metric ton, a ton yeah. like a literal oh, okay. metric ton of shit down that hole. Like that's a full <laughs> that's a full bulldozer load that went this down. This seems that weird. Hole. The hatch is. Oh well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 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 trying to tunnel. Okay, so you're attempting to to dig your way out, Al. You're attempting to call for help. Yep. And while I'm doing this, uh, I guess I go check on the the half dead girl. This seems like an appropriate time for this session, if not our chronicle, to end. We will pick this up. <laughs> you know, if it works out to do a, do another duo before next Monday, that would uh, allow us to, but only if, I know you've got a shit ton going on, so. Uh, no, uh, actually, we Work could do, Wednesday. uh, we could do another duo, uh, could you do it? Well, how about this? We'll work it around Zach's schedule. Yeah, I, so I far, it's the only one he knows for sure is Wednesday, so as long as they don't call him in another day, Wednesday's off the table, but... We'll Thursday. do it, though. Yeah, Thursday's good. 
Sounds so good. Well, you guys hopefully heard I'll it. have my webcam working, but yeah, we're gonna try to figure all that bullshit out. And uh, I'm going to hopefully play with my capture card and uh, learn all about that. So if uh, any of you guys, my my mentors out there, Bearden and Persephone and Johnny and whoever else might be out there, if you guys have more experience with capture cards, I will be hitting you up in Discord. <laughs> so, I guess we're good for tonight. So, we will see Thank you all you. in a couple days. Thank all of you Hopefully. guys. I'm going to put you on the... Uh, stream ending scene and we'll get you guys rated over to a friend thanks again to Knox and Zach <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow later everyone bye bye bye